We're here on this set with Adam and Mandy Gleason, founders of Replica Surfaces. How are you guys doing? Good, how are Good. you? Yeah. We're talking about a new brand launch that you guys are doing for Gleason. Tell us a little bit about Gleason. What is Gleason? So Gleason is the sister company to Replica Surfaces, the other company that we co-founded five years ago. And so with Gleason, we serve the same audience, the same customers, namely creators, small business owners, entrepreneurs, but we also want to widen that audience to other people that care about the things that they surround themselves with in their home. So with Gleason, the whole goal is to refine your day. So surround yourself with objects that are beautiful and exceptionally functional so that you can hit your flow state more often. So we think of flow state a lot as just being something that athletes experience, right? So basketball or a runner's high. But you can also feel that in your day-to-day -day life, whether you're, you're writing something or you're, you're creating something. And so we have found that we can hit that and have a better day when we don't have any kinds of mental clutter around or visual clutter leads to that mental clutter. And so that's why we want to create objects that look great, do their job exceptionally well, and then it can enhance either your mood or your productivity or whatever it is that makes your day feel better at the end of the day. And so when you wrap up that day, you know, this was a good one and have that more often because I feel like, especially in the small business owner, entrepreneur space, those are kind of elusive. They feel a little chaotic and we want to make them feel better. So that's the more like beautiful answer. <laughs> I think they're like, there's also like when we started this, like we are the replica customers. One of the big things that they wanted was a lighting system. And we kept hearing that, but we weren't ready to make it yet. But when we got to the point where we were going to make it, it was originally going to be a replica product. But as we developed it and added on all of these features, we started to feel that if somebody came to the replica website, and it's selling all photography stuff and then this stuff that sells other things, we'd create confusion. So um, it made a lot of sense to create a sister brand or a new brand um, where we could expand what we could offer um, while still serving the same people. And it honestly gave us a little bit of like creative room. Like we could have fun again with logos and colors and these sorts of things we hadn't thought about in a couple of years. Not that we don't think about the replica logo work stuff, but like, it'd been kind of almost cemented in a certain way. So this gave us that ability to kind of have fun being creative with those elements like we did when we started Replica. Mm -hmm, absolutely, so that's why with, with Gleason, we're starting with our two flagship products, the Dallas Lights and the Dallas Spotlight. And they have six functions all combined into one so that we can serve that exact same creator, small business owner community, but there are functions that can serve a much broader audience as well. Mandy, you mentioned earlier that there are six functions. Can you talk about those six functions? So Dallas Spotlight and Dallas Lights, they come together and they create the Dallas Lighting System. And together, that's what gives the six functions. So the first one, product photography, to serve our replica customers. Um, there's a diffuser that you place on the front, so the whole thing acts like a beautiful softbox to give you the soft lighting that you want for product and for food photography. From there, you can actually articulate the boom arm. So you can raise it up, you can put it down, and then the arm can go down to 90 degrees or anywhere in between. So now you can go from that to overhead videography or photography. So you shoot downward, maybe you're creating a recipe. Then you can go into content creation mode, ring light mode, there's your third function, by removing a diffuser. So now the Dallas lights they're shining right at your face and you can create any face-to-face -face video content that you need. From there, you can break the ring light, as we like to say. So you, you remove the two lights. They're placed into the shade via magnetic induction charging. So they stick in beautifully and satisfyingly when you clunk them in, but they also charge there, which if we've ever, if anyone who's ever created knows that charging is one of the banes of using lighting. So you can remove them place them next to your laptop or desktop computer, now you have video conferencing lighting and you look way better than you ever did before. And from there, you can change the color by using our pre-programmed lifts. So those are those colored settings where you get blue light when you wanna be awake, green light when you wanna focus, and red light to calm you and prepare you for sleep. 
And then all of those five functions, they all tie together as a beautiful floor lamp that hides in plain sight. So those are your six functions. Product photography, overhead videography, ring light, video conferencing, lifts, and the beautiful floor lamp. Whew. So with, with Gleason, with the light, tell us a little bit about the functionality of the light. Um, so yeah, we started out with, all right, we want to create a great product photography light. That's what our core customers were asking for. We knew we wanted to make it approachable. Uh, buying lighting equipment we found was very confusing. What mates with what, what works together with what, like we've, we spent a lot of time. What is this? You know, yeah. Like <laughs> What you, what's a Bowen's mount? Like we had to like learn all this stuff and watch YouTube videos and we'd go to B&H and we'd get confused and then you'd buy something it doesn't fit together. So we knew like, okay, we want to create a better product, uh, a light for product photography. We wanted to make it accessible, not only to buy and know it's going to work in a system, but then also to use. So we had that as like the kind of first inspiration. And then as we were working with that, we were like, okay, well, what lights are they using? Because we kept surveying our audience to kind of understand how we could best meet their needs. And many of them were using ring lights. And ring lights aren't always the best for product photography, either because of the size of them or the type of light or the ability to control it, all these things. And they're really ugly. So we're like, okay, can we somehow combine product photography with a ring light? And we did that by basically breaking uh, the ring light into two um, and making two individually battery powered things. Um, which was a heavy consideration because now we need two items, two batteries, two control boards. Like it's more for us to design and develop and, and ultimately um, has, you know, cost of good to that. Right. Um, but we found that it'd be most functional if we could have them be modular and you could use two together or three together um, in different ways to achieve the lighting that we wanted. Um, and then they could still be paired together in a ring light when we do it with the spotlight. And the way that we actually ended up coming up with the break the ring light concept, that wasn't actually part of the original ideation. What we were doing is we purchased a number of lights that were on the market that had different uses because we wanted to see what did we like about those solutions, what did we not like, so that we could, of course, incorporate everything we liked into ours. And in the process, we were trying some of them as zoom lights next to our computer. And we were like, okay, this is... This is amazing. This is a function that we do want to incorporate into our light. But how could we do that if we if they were, you know, if the light was just shining straight on you? How are you really lighting next to your computer? What do you do with the size of your table? So the first idea was, okay, if we were to break the ring light in two, you can now place them next to your laptop and you can light yourself for all of your video conferencing calls, which I mean we take multiple a day. Most people take multiple a day, whether they're a business owner or they work for a business, whatever it is. You know, this is, this is here to stay, you know, video conferencing. And as we were doing that, we were finding that during our morning meetings, we were feeling more energized than we normally were. So I'm usually like, I don't know, half a pot of coffee a day person, but I was drinking a cup, a cup and a half, and feeling the same when these lights were on. And you were finding the same thing. So we talked about how weird that was. Like at the end of the day, we'd have half a pot of coffee left. And so- Which is not normal for entrepreneurs who, no, who don't no, sleep no, and need gallons of caffeine. Very uncommon. Very uncommon. So, um, so we, looked, we looked into the science of that. Was there actually science that, that backed this up or were, were we just experiencing something weird? And so luckily we were both actually, we were both doctors. And so, um, and I was a neuroscience major. And he was a neuroscience major of all that. things. I earned that. So, yeah. yeah. So as we looked back at all of the, um, the the scientific articles, we were able to comprehend them and understand all of the you know the complexities there, and we found that there is a ton of science behind why we were feeling so good when these lights were on, and it turns out that. Um, that lights and dynamic lighting, where it changes color throughout the day, was being used by NASA on the International Space Station, of all things. So um, because astronauts' sleep cycle is completely out of whack, they don't have a normal sunrise and sunset. They have 16? They have 16. They in see 16 sunrises and sunsets in a day, which is a really cool fact. I didn't know that until, <laughs> until the articles. But um, So they tried different kinds of lighting. Blue lighting in the morning. Um, and red lighting at night, and that this massively improved their circadian rhythms, their sleep-wake cycle, and their ability to do work and complete tasks during the day. 
And so the actual, the science behind that is the science behind one of the new modalities that we've, one of the six functions that we've put into the Gleason lights. So our lifts. So we told you, we, we talked about that earlier before, before we got on camera. And um, so what they do is they change color um, so that you, in the morning, like I said, you use blue light in the morning and the red light at night. And what that's doing is it's activating a different part of the retina of your eye than you actually use for vision. It's, there are parts of the eye that only react to light, not to the physical thing that you're seeing. And when light hits those areas, by blue light, it increases something called melanopsin, which is the opposite opsin of melatonin. So it decreases your body's melatonin levels and makes you feel more awake. Yeah. Which you want melatonin right? at night, but not during the day when you're exactly. trying to get stuff done. Yeah. Exactly, and so at night, when you use the red light, um, but right before you go to bed, you're decreasing the level of melanopsin and therefore increasing the level of melatonin. So all it's doing is leaning into what your body is naturally producing, but you're helping it to do it now that we live in a, a situation that's, that's pretty disconnected from the actual circadian cycle of the sun. You know, we're getting up, we're getting up before the sun, we're going, you know, we're going to bed, we're not looking at the sunset. So we're really just using it to lean into your body's natural rhythms without any kind of pharmaceuticals. And you've seen that um, in ways that you probably didn't even recognize. Like, you know, we talk about blue blocker glasses. Um, so we, some people use that. But it's also integrated into other products like your, your phone will to kind of turn more of a reddish color and remove the blue light. Kindles do the same. Kind, exactly. Kindles do the same. And um, Car interiors, they used to be like this really nice, like calming red. Uh, the tack and all of that stuff, but then now any car you get into has like a big LCD screen and it's all blue colors. They had to get rid of that red orangish thing because it was a higher risk of somebody having getting so calm and so sleepy they'd have a car accident. So that's why car interiors are now um, more like a, an iPhone inside uh, to keep light. you more awake. Yeah. yeah. So a lot of other products incorporate this this science in a small way, and what we're doing with the lifts um, within the, the Dallas Lights is just being more purposeful about it. So just giving that light to you directly rather than a, a little bit of it within whatever other technology that you're using. So long-winded answer. I talk about this, <laughs> this, is my this is my favorite part and I love the fact that it was an accident. So we, we've talked a little bit about you know, this launch of this sister brand, Gleason. And you're building a brand here, just like you did with Replica Surfaces, which is a brand. Um, Brands are difficult to build. They need a why, as we all know. You need a why behind your brand. Can you talk about what the why is behind Gleason? When it comes to the why behind Gleason, I think it really comes back to the concept of refining your day. Um, you know, our tagline is your day refined. And that's, that's, we came up with that very early on. It felt right and it stuck now for the past, I mean, for over a year now. And I think the reason that that resonates with us is refinement is more about small changes that make a big impact. So we're not, we don't stand for waking up at 4 a.m. hustle culture, unless that's your thing. But that's not, that's not what we or any of our products advocate for. It's, it's about having the right equipment for the job. It's easy to use, it's, it's super intuitive, it does its job exceptionally well so that you don't clutter your mind with having to learn unnecessary or, or difficult facts in order to use your product or it's, or it's a struggle to lift and move around and that, that just kind of grates on you. So it's about the perfect tool and then why not make it beautiful in the process so you never think about that ugly thing sitting in the corner of your room. Or in the closet. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Um, don't think about having to set it up. So that, that um, one of our customers' biggest requests when we asked them what they needed in a lighting product was something that was easy to store. And that came up more frequently than we ever really expected that it would. So a lot of us live in smaller spaces. We live in apartments. Maybe we're living in a big city and storage space is at a massive premium. And so storage over and over, easy to set up and take down. And when we heard that concept, uh, we thought, okay, well, 
there's two ways that we could tackle that really. You could make it easily collapsible, you know, make some cheap storage bags. So, okay, fine. You can throw it in the closet easier than you could otherwise. But you still have to find that closet and you still have to waste all of that time taking it out, setting it up, uh, tearing it down. And so anyone who's created knows that that is an incredible drain on your mental energy, your creativity, and really just your time. So we thought, well, can we solve that problem rather than making it easy to store by, store, by, by storing it in plain sight, hiding it right in front of you as a beautiful floor lamp that you never have to disassemble, you never have to set it up. That's genius. In a certain way, like form is function there. Like the, the yes. visualness of it in your home, how it looks is another function of a product that we think is often discounted by most people designing products. And to that end, I think, not to knock on every product designer, but I feel like most, most products are designed in a boardroom with a team of engineers and designers. They're fighting over it. Like costs are heavily involved early on so they can make it for a dollar a unit and then hopefully they sell 100,000 units. Like we have designed this complete opposite to that. We've designed it from our kitchen table with the why in mind. And I think with that, we've created something that I think is much more special than most things you can find and 100% more special than anything on Amazon. Definitely, we don't have to make the sacrifices to either form or function to hit those kind of boardroom metrics and satisfy our There's metrics. something to be said about when a creative spark happens for someone, you were speaking about it earlier, like the drain it is to have to set everything back up to get that creative burst out. Mm -hmm. But if it's already set up, yeah, you know. Yeah. Exactly. And that's why like many of our customers have said they just keep the ring light up. And it's this ugly black plastic ring light that's plugged into a wall outlet and it's just this eyesore. Um, and so that was a thing that we knew we could do much better than. You guys mentioned before we started filming that Gleason had been five years in the making. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? So the other part of why Gleason's been five years in the making is that when we first started with Replica, we had no idea really what we were doing as new business owners and as product designers. So we chose a product that people with minimal experience could actually execute on well. So printed backdrops, you know, there's, there's no electronics, there's no massive manufacturing or design that has to go into that. Can't be that hard. It can't possibly be that hard. We were really naive. We ended up learning that it's very difficult to get printing right. There's ink curing, there's material science. So all that aside. But the whole point was that we thought that we could, we could get a hold of that. We, never, we, we, would ne we knew that we would never be able to make something as complex as the lighting system that we're making now. So over the course of those five years and the experience that we got first with surface design, then with soft goods of making our carrying case, and then something more complex with the Replica Studio, which um, is a way that you can hold your backdrops and it really makes it an amazing shooting experience, we're finally at the point where we can take that next leap into designing something so complex, so multifunctional, and know that the final product is going to be as amazing as, as we want it to be. Yeah, we've made things out of metal and plastic and cloth, and now the next variable is, is electronics, uh, which we've got some great partners to help us understand that I'm not doing the soldering. <laughs> yes, we have an amazing design team behind us, so they were able to work with us and take our ideas, ideate them, design them, engineer them, and then we can well, you know, find the right manufacturer. So amazing team we're working with, but we are mentally and emotionally prepared for the rigors of designing something so complicated by this point. What were the kernels that ultimately led to Gleason? There's a lot of ways to answer that question, but we looked at what we liked around us and that's what kind of inspired us. So like there's products that are made by a company called Marshall. They obviously have known for music products, but they, they sell a speaker that we love. Uh, they didn't have to build it beautifully. It's got gold finishes and looks like it's old, but functions like it's new. It's got buttons that you can turn and press. And so like getting inspired by things that, uh, that, were, that we wanted helped kind of, that was one of the kernels that, uh, that helped guide us towards wanting physical buttons on the, on the lights. And kind of old tech, new tech was one of the kernels. We were really inspired by home decor and having those beautiful, 
either multifunctional or just exceptionally functional things around us. So both of us, we, we hate when there's clutter. We hate when there's this, you know, the dishes building up in the sink. We find that we can't concentrate on the work that we're trying to achieve, particularly when it's more creative work. So to have those beautiful objects around you just gives you that, that peace of mind. And so knowing that that was something that was really influencing our day, we thought, you know, there's no way we're alone in that desire to have fewer things, but really great things surrounding you. So like Adam said, the Marshall speakers being beautiful but function like they're modern. We have a, you know, the new version of the Nespresso coffee maker. You know, you've probably seen it. They've evolved so much from the original function is not that different from the new function, but now it looks a lot more like a piece of art on your counter. And that gives me, you know, the mental peace to just, just create, just, to, just to, to have a better mood and a better experience in my day. That makes sense. Yeah, so there's like minimalism and multifunction, right? If you, if you can have one thing that does many, then you don't need lots of different things, which is why we wanted to build something that had six different functions. Um, and by being beautiful, it's also serving its own purpose in your visual eye line and those sorts of things. So we'd started thinking about like, all right, well, what if we make things for the home and we make them multifunctional and maybe they, they do something, but then they kind of hide in plain sight. So we loved this idea so much that like three years ago, four years ago, we bought the domain name Hide Home because mm. we thought we would make something along those lines. We still own it. It's not going to be used for anything There's that I know of. There's nothing on the website. So hopefully we can sell it someday for more than we bought it for. <laughs> but we were going down that path and that was 2019, 2020. Yeah, initially we were thinking about how do you hide like uh, dog products in your home? So I was using this super ugly Tupperware to put my dog's dog food in it. And it was just sitting on the counter, distractingly ugly. And so that was kind of one of those first kernels of let's make beautiful things. But then that evolved and we thought, well, if we make beautiful things, but we don't serve our current customer base, we're kind of doing them a bit of a disservice. So knowing that our replica customer base, and we have this incredible tight-knit community two-way street, you know, great brand relationship with, with our customers, they needed to solve, you know, first and foremost, their photography and their content problems. So we were able to take the kernel of those beautiful things and apply it to the thing that they were most looking for, which was lighting. Got it. So this is your path from replica surfaces to Gleason to a light, mm -hmm. basically. Yeah. And the cool thing is that we can, we can use these elements to then guide like what we'll make next after the, 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 the Dallas Lights and Dallas Spotlight. We kind of have this framework of beautiful minimalism, multifunction. We could take that in any path now um, and, and make a whole host of products. So that's the leap. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You brought up a, an example earlier of what you use for some design inspiration. Can you speak to that a little bit more? Like, what are some other brands or, or pieces of inspiration you pulled for, from to yeah. create the, the design of, of Gleason? So Marshall was a big one. Um, and then we've even kind of taken some of that into the branding. There's hopefully a bit of rock and roll feel to it. I think that gold of the Gleason kind of carried into it. Um, we There's another company, we haven't purchased from them yet, but uh, Buster and Punch, we've bought it for prototyping purposes, but they make really cool interior design pieces like doorknobs and um, uh, lights. Like, uh, drawer pulls, so, so kind of yeah. like that, the hardware yeah. that you'd use in your home, as well as a lot of lighting mm -hmm. um, for, for, for the home specifically, ambient lighting. And that founder, star, before they founded Buster and Punch, he uh, did like motorcycle resto modding where he would make an old motorcycle and put on like cool new uh, pieces that would make it feel like a, a new piece of art. So he had that background and he took that motorcycle history into interior design and we were really inspired by that story and honestly the products they make. So some of the knurled um, mm -hmm. elements of it kind of are an homage to what we've liked with Buster and Punch. Yeah. As you were talking about this process of, of idea to prototype, uh, in talking to a lot of founders and being involved in the process myself in the past, I know there's a tendency sometimes to cut corners and you know to make compromises from the original vision of what you you were trying to create before we started filming you talked about how you guys have gone to a great extent to not let that happen can you talk a little bit about about that so when it comes to making compromises there's kind of two different ways that 
you can look at that. You can look at a compromise in that you're either sacrificing form or you're sacrificing function. Or it can be more of a positive compromise where you're really hitting a barrier, whether it's something isn't working from a manufacturing standpoint or from a physics standpoint. And you need to go back to the original idea that you had and think about why were we trying to incorporate that feature in the first place. So for an example, with the shade on the Dallas Spotlight, initially we had designed it to have rounded square corners and emulate that same design language of each of the Dallas lights. But in doing that, the shade looked really industrial, like it looked kind of like a vacuum cleaner nozzle or um, like it, was in a, it should be in a dental office rather than a beautiful object in your home. And the reason that we had that shape was because we had a door in the back of it. And so through that door, you were able to look through and either see the screen on the back of your DSLR camera or you could see the screen on your phone. So in that way, you could actually use the higher quality camera where you can't see yourself, the one on the back side of your phone. And so when we wanted to now, now go to a beautiful rounded shape, we weren't able to incorporate that door. You can't have a rounded door, right? And so we had to let that paradigm of we need a door go and revert back to, well, what's the goal we're trying to accomplish here? It's to try and see the screen. So in doing so, we were able to then incorporate um, a hole in the back of the internals of, this, of the shade with a removable shade that comes off. So now you can look through that hole and see that screen. Oh, so in that sense, the compromise was a very con uh, positive compromise rather than one of the ones that sacrificed either form or function. We were able to have a better form, and in my opinion now, actually an even better function than we had with the door in the first place. Yeah, it's magic when that happens. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so the shape is really cool, the way you guys did that. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the shape and how, do you, how did you come to that decision? And that? Yeah, um, so we knew that the shape of the shade was gonna like basically choose how the whole floor lamp would look in your home. We knew it was massively important. So we started by going to like basically every place that sells floor lamps to kind of understand what, what forms currently exist. And we couldn't really find anything that like matched what we wanted. And so I'm a huge, like I love cars. So I started looking at those forms and there's a new Koenigsegg um, that's called the, what is it? Uh, I think it's Jamera. Jamera. Um, not a big Koenigsegg guy, but I love the, the, the shape of it. And what was cool about it is that it was a curve, um, but it had the apex kind of more towards uh, one side. And that was that fit with uh, you know how it's going to attach to the the rod and all those things. So we thought, okay, can we take that form? Um, and so we, I literally like went into Photoshop and like took that car and then outlined its shape and drew it a million times. And it looked terrible for the first hundred, but then eventually the inspired shape came to be. And then I passed it to people much more talented than me. <laughs> they converted that those doodles into what, uh, what exists today. And what we got was the same function that we wanted with it being removable. And that was like the huge aha, have it be removable, you don't need a door, and we can have this form that we love.